Welcome fellow apple growers to the 10th annual Salt Spring Island Apple Festival. Yay! I'm Captain Apple, I'm a good guy, and I'm going to be the MC today. When you look around this incredible room, you're going to see 312 varieties of apples grown on Salt Spring this year, and all grown organically. And we've cut open the red flesh apples so you can actually see the red in them. They are a marvel of Mother Nature. Boy, are they incredible. The rest of the world doesn't get it yet, but they will sooner or later. Um, so, as you wander the orchards today, let's let's think of Mother Nature and think of what she does for us. She is just an incredible uh, concept. So, without much further ado here, I'm going to welcome our first reenactment. These apples here are so powerful, they've actually brought back characters from the dead. And the first character we're going to have is Theodore Trege here, who started growing apples in 1860 on Salt Spring Island. Theodore. I was outside looking for my poultry, and I heard the sound of their kinder laughing, and I smelled apples, and I thought, what kind of place is this? Everywhere I see apples, and I think I must tell you my story of my life. I am Theodore Trevi. In 1854, I came to America from Hamelin, Germany, and I caught the fever for good. Let me tell you, in my life, I have learned there are many ways to make money, and many ways to make a living, but gold was very hard work. Luckily, I found a little bit of gold, and I came to Salt Spring Island in 1860. I rode all around the island looking for the best place to grow apples and I landed in Fulford Harbor. Well, let me tell you, it was a happy decision. In 1860, I was clearing land with my friend Spikerman from the old country and Mengi and Heinrich Trees. We called ourselves the Four Rats from Hamlin. You know the story of the rats from Hamlin? We left with the piper. Well, we were splitting shingles. And we could make a lot of money this way. For 1,000 cedar shingles, we got $3.50. Then that was a lot of money. And I would put the shingles in my rowboat. And I would row them all the way to Victoria putting on top of the shingles strawberries and so I could come to the market with, with soft fruit and sell my shingles on the apples but one day, very near here near Fulford Creek Hardwick, Mangy, Trees and, and I were cutting shingles when the new bishop for Vancouver Island Bishop Hills came he was looking for converts to his Anglican church in Victoria. And he approached us. Now, Trees, Mengi, Spikerman, they were Catholics. And I was a Lutheran. We wanted nothing to do with this man. When we saw him coming, I made sure to pepper our conversation with blasphemies. Normally we never swore, but for Bishop Hills we did that day. So soon his nose was quite out of joint. And he asked us, did we think that a man should take time to go to church? Well, I was feeling a bit cheeky. And I said that every man should go to church if he had the opportunity. Well, Bishop Hillis got back in his boat and went back to Victoria. And we continued with our lives. But that was hard work clearing the land. Now I want to tell you about a very special time in my life. I felt sick with bad fever in the bush. When I awoke, I was being tended by an angel, my Susanna. 
she came to me when I was sick. And because she was Croatian, she spoke no English. And I spoke very poor English, I can tell you. Well, Susanna and I fell in love. And let me tell you, our love lasted a lifetime. I was lucky enough to have 11 children with Susanna. And four of them I got to see grow up. I have always loved their kinder. And nothing gave me more pleasure than watching my little Clara eat apple cushion. Well, I tell you, I had happy times then with my Susanna. We had 839 acres of land, 1600 apple trees, Gloria Mundi, Canadian Rennox, and Wolf River, still the best cooking apple in the world. Well, Wolf River is a fine cooker, and my Susanna made the apple cushion on the apple cake, and we raised fine children. And now I see in the audience my beautiful Susanna's eyes, right there. That, ladies and gentlemen, she cannot see me because I am from another world. But there is my own darling Susanna's eyes. In Bob Lingard's eyes, you will see her beauty. Now, a few facts. I had the first buggy with rubber tires on Salt Spring Island. I built the first wharf, the Treggy Wharf. Reginald Hill, of course it was originally called Treggy Mountain. And my daughter, my daughter Clara, married the Maxwells, so they got to keep their Maxwell name. Well, I wonder if you realize that in 1891, I was selling my apples and my plums for two cents a pound. Now, I could take 50 boxes of apples to Cadborough Bay in my rowboat. Two cents a pound. I was becoming a very wealthy man indeed. And by 1892, prices soared. And I was getting two and a half cents for my apples. I hear the steamer John. I, I have 50 boxes of full River apples to take to New Westminster. I must be going. But you know, apples are not just for displays. Apples, apples should be for the kinder. So then I go out to the boat. All the kinder come and I will give you sweet graven steeds. Apples should not... Oh, I must be going. Captain Apple, thank you for having me today. You are one superhero who is truly appealing. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Theodore. That was incredible.